and Hugh Leonard, who has written the uh, Tony Award-winning play, Da. Uh, and he's with us today for our tribute to Broadway. Welcome, Hugh. Thank you. Really glad to have you here. I'm glad to be here. Um, is it different writing for theater uh, and television? Is that different? Yes, it's a, I think it's a question of scale, that if you're writing for television, you can get in close on faces and things like that. And so you need less space. In, in terms of time. You, if, for example, if I want to establish that two people hate each other, it could take me a couple of pages of dialogue in a, in a play to, to get that animosity in. But if I'm doing it in television, the camera can simply get in there and show it without a, without a word being said, uh, which is why I think television, the television version, say, of a stage play will always be shorter because you don't need so much dialogue. And the more intimate something is, uh, the better suited for television. This is why I think uh, Grand Opera doesn't go very well on television. It's just, it just blows out into the middle of a living room, and it's too big for the room. Well, do you work with the producer and the director when you take something to the stage? I mean, do you have to, is it there a fine line and lots of cuts from the book and that kind of thing? G generally speaking, um, I, I usually write very tight, and I like to leave them alone. I, I feel that if a director is going to make a mess of something, I'd like him to make a mess of it in his own way, because if I come and get partly my way and he gets partly his, then you've got a hybrid <laughs> and uh, it's a mess. Yeah. But at least even if he's wrong, it, 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 may, it may work. Hugh, what, what does da mean? Uh, da is the Irish diminutive for a <coughs> father. It's like papa or okay. a paw or whatever. And you do live in Dublin? I live a little bit outside Dublin, overlooking the sea in the place where da is set, a town called Dorky, a little, uh, little fishing port. Oh, I bet it's beautiful. Well, it's very nice. Uh, if, if only we had a weather, you know, the country just needs a roof very badly. <laughs> Lester Osterman, the producer of Da, was telling me that uh, he said when he first saw the show, he walked out into the lobby and he was interested in the comments. He said no one was talking about where they were going after the theater to dinner or anything like that. They were all saying to each other, hey, you've got an uncle just like that. And these were Jewish, Italian, Polish people all relating to it. Why do you think that well, is? Well, the, the, the strange thing is that... Uh, I think, first of all, they all relate to the son in the play instead of to the father, because they all say, yes, one of these, these days my father's going to die, or my father did die, or is dying, but they never say, I'm the father, I'm dying. No. You know? uh, I, I, think the, I think the reason is that uh, the, the play is basically about a, a man who leaves home, and he's got one foot in this small town and this small way of thinking, and he's got the other foot in a different kind of world which he wants to belong to, and he really can't live in one or the other. He, you know, he's stuck between them and can't get rid of either. And uh, I think there are lots of people, say, in New York, uh, particularly in the Jewish community, who are perhaps working on uh, Madison Avenue and are doing quite well and who have pardons uh, down the Lower East Side or something like that. And they're, they're a bit guilty about being in one place, but they're, they're damned if they're going to go back to the <laughs> other. And uh, I, I, I think this is uh, what, what uh, sticks in people's mind. Well, Da will be coming here. What expectations do you have for the national company? I think they're going to do very well. I, I gather the bookings are very, very high, and uh, we, I think we hope we'll be asked back after the, after the tour is over. You are director of uh, the Dublin Theatre Festival, 78 mm -hmm. and 79. How do Irish audiences or audiences in Dublin differ from here, do you think? Uh, they're very rowdy, um, particu oh, yeah. particularly on first nights. Irish audiences like to laugh. They, you show them Hamlet and they fall around. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Aida, they, they just roll in the aisle. But uh, they, they, they're very demonstrative on first nights. They're very partisan. They're either very for or very against the play. And they come expecting, hoping to be in at the start of something very valuable. And so I, I just loathe first nights. I like to come along on the third night and to see it with an ordinary audience. You know, the first nights are a bit different. But it's very strange when you have a play in Dublin and then you move it, say, to New York, and the audience is much more quiet and uh, is much, much more serious-minded. And you say, my gosh, the play isn't working at all. This is, this is because you're used to the Irish audience kind of reaction. You have such a great sense of humor and a tremendous way with words. And you've been quoted as saying, I love the U.S. because it's the only country in the world that's not Americanized. Mm. Is that a one-liner or does that have a deeper meaning? Oh, no, it, it, it has a very specific meaning. Uh, for example, Ireland, uh, Americanization doesn't suit Ireland because Ireland is too small. You can build a filling station out there and you've still got about 3,000 miles from, of, of ni nice country. But in Ireland, if we build a filling station, We've only got 156 miles and we're in the Atlantic Ocean. So <laughs> yeah. we're, we're not geared for Americanization. And we, we become slightly mongrel in the, in, the, in the sense that we become partly Irish, partly American, partly English, while uh, America is doing their own thing, which is great. That, that, that's why I like the country. Have you ever written anything uh, that, that has not taken place in Ireland? Or uh, isn't specifically Irish? I've written a play called The Old Pair Man, uh, which is really a kind of... Julie Harris played in it in, in New York. And it's, it's meant to be... Uh, Oh, kind of uh, 
an analogy of the British, uh, British monarchy. There's a lady called Elizabeth Rogers, Eeyore for Elizabeth, and a young man called Eugene Hartigan who represents uh, the outsider Ireland com coming in and, uh, and she educates him, does a Pygmalion in reverse and in return takes his backbone. But you were saying you, you would prefer being thought of as an Irishman who writes rather than an Irish author? Yeah, you know, there's, rather than an Irish author, as they say, the OI is very important. <laughs> And uh, you, you usually you get Irish plays, and they have uh, their their priorities are leprechauns and uh, lovable gunmen and uh, what we call maid marriages and tyrannical parish priests and all the paraphernalia of plays in the 30s and 40s. Uh, I believe in Ireland as being part of the world and the plays as being part of world. It's just that I think I hope my plays could be about anything in any country, but they just obviously happen to be are. set in Ireland. Yeah, but obviously everyone relates to it. You were telling me you have a new trawler that you enjoy and you love cats. Is life pretty good to Hugh Leonard? Oh yes, I'm pretty good to life as well. <laughs> uh, I, have, I have two cats, one called Rover, which is the biggest cat in Ireland, and the other is called Dove, <laughs> which is jet black. Dove is the Irish for black. And uh, we have a kind of cruiser on the Shannon. It's our, it's, our, it's our sort of getaway thing. It's about three hours away and it's sleep seven, so we ring up a few friends and say, do you want to come out and uh, do a little bit of drinking and a little bit of uh, cruising? That's and nice. You like being in Boston? Yeah, very much. I had never been here before. I love it. Boston loves having you here. Hugh Leonard, thank you very much for being with us. I really enjoyed it.